Hello, I'm Wendy. Today we're mixing greens in watercolour. There's a short tutorial and then a demonstration painting. I've been enjoying painting some spring and summer woodland pictures recently and this is the palette that I've been using. I've really been enjoying mixing these colours, they've been working really well. The yellow that I'm using is a cool yellow. You could use lemon yellow, cadmium yellow light and the green that I'm using is actually a tube green which is sap green. I don't usually use tube greens when I'm painting greens because they can look quite artificial and especially as a beginner I would really stay away from them and mix up your own. The exception is sap green. It's a lovely green, it's really nice on its own even and is a really good mixer. As you can see here it, um, it dilutes down with water to a lovely pale colour. And the blue I'm using mainly is cobalt blue. I will be using Prussian blue for mixing some of the darker greens later on. Here I'm taking the yellow and then gradually adding increasing amounts of blue to it, doing the colour swatches. I found that painting colour swatches like this is really the best way to get to know your colours. You'll see here that the greens start off quite warm even though it's a cool yellow. You're starting off with these warmer greens. The more blue that you're adding then they're getting cooler. Now this video would get very boring and repetitive if I showed you all the mixers like that. So I've done some earlier and um, this is the colour swatch page that I made. On the top row we have the three colours that I'm using here which is the cadmium yellow pale, the sap green and the cobalt blue. And then we can see what happens when we're adding the blue to the cadmium yellow. Now on the bottom row here, I've got the sap green and I put the sap green with some yellow and you can see the difference there. It's, it's warmed up the sap green and it's quite a nice sort of yellowy warm green. And to the right of that, we've got the sap green with increasing amounts of the blue and further to the right we've got mixes of the yellow with the blue and the sap green. So as I've said there you can get an infinite number of mixes here. These are just some of them. What I suggest you do is you take these three colours that I'm using for the majority of the greens in the um, demonstration painting and do your own colour mixes on them. Remember to label them because you will forget clearly what you've done. Um, it might look a bit messy like mine, but that doesn't matter, does it? You've got the information there and you can use that in, in the future. You might want to experiment mixing some darks with the cobalt blue. Here I'm using the cadmium yellow pail with quite a lot of the cobalt blue in it. I can only get it so dark before it goes really very, very blue. I like to use Prussian blue, particularly for the darker greens, because it works very, very well with burnt sienna. It easily gives you a nice dark green. In my experience, cobalt blue and ultramarine don't work as well to give you the, um, the strong darks that you sometimes need.
So you can see here I've labelled the swatches and also on the right hand side I've mixed the darks with the Prussian blue and burnt sienna but I've also added a little bit of sap green and you can see how this lightens that darker mix. Watercolours always dry back to a lighter tone so it can be quite a struggle to mix some of the darks that you're looking for. On the bottom left here I've swapped the burnt sienna for burnt umber so I'm mixing burnt umber with the Prussian blue. You can get it considerably darker. You need to add enough water so that you keep the mix transparent and as a tip what I suggest you do is keep loading your brush as you're putting the darks on. Don't spread the paint around too much or it will dry a lot lighter. And finally here I'm adding some sap green to that mix to brighten it up a little bit. So here's the page of swatches for the dark greens. The next part of the video is a demonstration painting and it's using the colours that I've shown you and most of the mixes that I've shown you. You'll find that I have speeded some parts of the painting process up as it can get quite repetitive. I started off by doing a pencil drawing. It's, it's quite sketchy so what I've done is I've put you a picture up here of the finished painting. Um, you can download this, there's a link in the description box below if you wanted to use my drawing. I put some masking fluid on um, where the thistles were growing underneath this tree. The idea for this painting came from this photograph that I took some years ago. I have made some tonal changes to this painting and also I've um, added a little fence underneath the tree. When the masking fluid was dry I started doing the background wash. I used a very very light cobalt blue to stand for the sky. And starting the foliage here I was using a lemon yellow and some sap green. As I went further down in the picture then I put on some raw sienna for a warmer colour for the field behind the tree. And then the same yellow in the foreground and I covered the tree with a very light grey. I do like to cover the painting with a first wash. I find that this works much better for me rather than leaving areas of white. You can judge the colours more easily and then also as well you're not frightened by a big area of white that you've got to cover later on in the painting. This is a photograph of some of the lighter greens that I used for the first wash of the foliage. I was using a sponge so I did need to mix up a lot of colour. I've mixed here the greens using the lemon yellow with some cobalt blue and I've also incorporated some sap green in the mixes. So it's a good idea to, make, to mix um, several of them so you've got a good choice of the light greens when you're doing your painting. As the sponge work progressed on the foliage I added a little bit more of the cobalt blue to darken the greens. If you'd like to learn a little bit more about mark making with a sponge for foliage then I do have a video um, describing this in some detail and I'll put a link in the description box below.
the next stage of the tree foliage, then I'm going to start using a small brush to give some indication of just individual leaves on the tree and making some different marks, making it all more interesting. In this case, I'm using my darkest green, as you can see here, and it contrasts really well against the lighter greens that we put down. Um, in this case, the very dark green is that mix of Prussian blue with burnt sienna. That's the main mix, but that can be adjusted by adding some of your other greens and yellows in there to vary it a little bit. I started building up the foreground using dry brush strokes and the different greens. If you'd like to know more about using dry brush then there's a link in the description box below to a video that I made some time ago that you might find interesting. Following the dry brush work on the foreground, I returned to using the sponge just to produce a few marks that would fit in and sort of harmonise with the marks that were made in the tree foliage. I think the painting starts coming together as soon as you um, paint the tree trunk and the tree trunk I painted with a mixture of burnt sienna and ultramarine. I work wet into wet, varying the strokes and the tones a little bit. And then using a rigger brush and a strong mix of the brown, I intertwine some of the branches and the twigs in between the foliage. I added a few marks with a rigger to suggest individual grasses there in the foreground and then I painted a shadow from the tree using the dry brush stroke again and some darker green. It was time to see how things were shaping up and I find it useful at this stage to pop a little mount around the painting. I rubbed the masking fluid off in the foreground leaving those white shapes that you can see they're going to be painted pink to represent the thistles. I decided at this stage to put a little fence in and also some little twigs coming from the base of the tree and then using a sponge I did a little bit of just slightly dabbing with the sponge to suggest some leaves and bits of foliage peeping out from uh, underneath the fence there. For the flowers I used a combination of my pinks I do use cobalt violet and mauve sometimes, but you could use any of your pinks if you're painting this picture. And a little bit of an opaque white, such as an ink, opaque ink, or opaque gouache. 
just to um, soften the tops of some of the um, the flowers. The masking fluid does seem to make very hard edges, so a combination of a bit of gouache and some pink, just to suggest the pink flowers in there, which were the thistles. And finally, a few stems with my darkest green again and a rigger. Hope you like the finished painting and also I hope that you're feeling a little bit more confident maybe on tackling some of those summer greens. If you would like to post any of your work then you can do so in my Facebook group and whenever possible I'll give comments on it as well so don't be shy it would be really nice to see some of the work that you've been doing that's related to my videos. All social media links can be found in the description box below the video and if you're on Twitter then I'm dipping my toes into the water if you like and I'm starting to put some work up on Twitter as well. Again the link is below. Don't forget to like the video if you did and to subscribe to my channel if you don't want to miss anything else that's coming up in the future. Bye for now.